guys, so I'm here today to recommend to you some LGBTQ plus books. I did film a video like this a couple of years ago, so if you want more recommendations from me then there are some more in that video that I'm not going to mention in this video and I'll link it down below, although it is a bit of an oldie. Um, hopefully you will find plenty of recommendations in both this video and the previous video. And without further ado, let's get into the books. First up I'm going to mention White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. So White is for Witching is a slightly dark, sinister, paranormal type literary novel and it's so beautifully written. Hel Helen Oyeyemi is a stunning writer and this story is told from the perspective of a house and this house has been the home of various generations of women in this one family and these women are supposed to be witches with the latest generation of this family being a young girl living with her father and her brother in this house. And it's about the way in which this house affects the family and it affects her mind and there's always this slight doubt in your head whether there is magic or whether there's not magic because it's so subtle. But at the same time the young woman in this story is also having a relationship with another young woman that she meets at university and despite all the kind of darker themes in this book I feel like that relationship is a sort of beacon of light amidst all of this and the way that Helen Oyemi writes about these two characters um, feelings for one another is really beautiful. You also hear from the perspective of the other women involved in the relationship and I really really enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting it from this novel and I find that quite often. So quite often books involve LGBT plus relationships. That seems to be left off the blurb in a way that a heterosexual relationship wouldn't be because for some reason the publishers think that that's not something to advertise which is such a shame because I actually think that there's more books I would pick up if I knew that there was LGBT plus relationships in them. So hopefully that's something that will change in the future but in the meantime we can just recommend books to one another so I would highly recommend checking out White is for Witching. I'm going to try and flip this around so next I'm going to mention a non-fiction book and that is the essays and speeches of Audre Lorde in this collection called Sister Outsider. Audre Lorde was a black feminist lesbian poet who wrote both poetry but also non-fiction on the topics of sexuality, race, racism, homophobia, feminism and she is very much a pioneer in the uh, world of intersectionality and conceptualising intersectionality for feminists and the importance of uh, feminism representing every different type of women including gay women and black women and it's such an important collection I would say um, for feminists to read Audre Lorde has such a powerful voice and again her poetry equally worthwhile checking out because it beautifully deals with those same themes. She has such a defined voice and you get to hear both about her theories as well as her personal experiences um, and her relationships and her uh, being a mother which was really interesting. Uh, she did in unfortunately die in the 90s of cancer but she left behind her a wonderful legacy of writing that is very very worthwhile checking out. To keep the genres switching I then have a graphic novel. This is The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. Isabel Greenberg has two large format graphic novels like this, the other one being The Encyclopedia of Early Earth. And I love both but this one in particular. So this is inspired by 101 Arabian Nights um, and in this story we follow two women who are in a romantic relationship. One of them is married to a wealthy lord and her husband makes a bet with another wealthy man that he won't be able to seduce his wife and therefore simply opens up his wife to attempted seduction and almost and the threat of being forced into a relationship with this other man. In the meantime she has this romantic relationship with the other women in the story and they're deeply in love but they live in a world where their relationship is not acceptable so they cannot express that in public. And in order to stall this man from essentially attacking the other women, her lover tells stories each night to distract him which is where we get the 100 nights of hero because the character is called hero and that way we learn all these other lovely little stories so this is very much a series of interconnected little short stories beautifully illustrated like here Isabel Greenberg's style is stunning and connected by the story of these these two two women and it's stunning, it's stunning to read, it's stunning to experience and it's stunning to look at 
everything so beautiful i always think as well isabel greenberg is one for those of you that aren't necessarily that into graphic novels perhaps are interested in dipping your toes into the genre because she will appeal to so many different people and her books are wordy despite being graphic novels there's plenty of text to get your teeth into another non-fiction title that i want to mention is the gender games by juno dawson juno dawson is an author of young adult fiction generally she's written loads of wonderful young adult fiction novels um, and she's also a trans woman and she went through her transition very publicly because she was already sort of in the media's eye and this book is all about her journey to coming to terms with um, her true gender and transitioning so that the outside world also recognises her as a woman as she has always known that she is. So this book is wonderful. It's such an important story and something we should all be reading about. It's also just really wonderfully written. It's really easy to read or listen to. Juno, Juno Dawson narrates the audiobook and she does a fantastic job. I would highly recommend the audiobook. And it also deals with themes of feminism, intersectionality and sexuality. And it's just such a moving and powerful story and it both deals with Juno Dawson's personal journey and also a kind of commentary on activism and feminism and the importance of um, in, in, inclu being inclusive within those spaces and um, the future of all of these things and it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful book. Next up is a collection of poetry by Denise Smith. This is Don't Call Us Dead and in this collection Denise Smith deals with a lot of topics close to his heart including racism and homophobia in particularly, identifying as queer as well as the author's experience with HIV and being HIV positive. Positive. It is such a visceral collection. These poems are gut-wrenching, they punch you in the stomach, they make you feel so affected by the words which is a sign of the wonderful writing in this collection and how emotive it is. You can't help but feel quite emotional reading them but they're also incredibly powerful and incredible to read and this collection has had so much praise as has Denise Smith's other work and I can completely see why it is so well deserved and if you're already a big poetry fan or just looking to get into poetry then this is one I would definitely suggest checking out. I also want to mention this non-fiction book which is How to Survive a Plague, The History of How Activists and Scientists Tamed AIDS by David France. Now this is a non-fiction book like I mentioned which is all about the rise of the AIDS epidemic particularly in the US and um, how both scientists and activists dealt with that so it explores both the scientific side of AIDS and kind of the studies that were being done to figure out where this disease was coming from, how it functioned, how it affected people, why it was affecting people differently um, and obviously looking for treatments and at the same time it's about the activists, um, many of whom were HIV positive, um, who couldn't get treatment, were campaigning um, again at the drug companies who were kind of refusing to push these medications through that could save their lives and make um, their lives longer and um, help them be able to live and it's actually quite a positive story because although not all of the campaigners survived this period it had the result in the end of these medications being approved and being made publicly available which was amazing and obviously there's still a long way to go in the treatment of HIV and AIDS and awareness and um, respect for those that um, have this disease and kind of um, our concept of it, people still have really mis a lot of misconceptions about HIV um, and then there's obviously the, the struggle right now to get uh, PrEP um, which is a, a drug that can stop people from contracting HIV um, on the NHS in the UK so there's a lot of campaigning left to do but this is such an affirming book in that it really shows you the positive impact activism can have and it's also a really interesting non-fiction book on the history of that topic and there's also a documentary called How to Survive a Plague as well which interviews the campaigners from the original campaign which is phenomenal. This book tells you more about the science than the 
documentary does but they're both amazing and make great companion material and I would highly recommend both of them to be honest. And lastly for this video I want to mention The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by Jen Campbell. This is a collection of short stories with various levels of sort of magical realism throughout them and um, themes from folk tales and fairy, real, fairy tales coming coming out in the stories and we have everything from stories that seem to be set in sort of dystopian futures to the contemporary world and a variety of different themes and characters. We, we have characters with disfigurements, we have characters who are LGBT+, we have themes like grief and othering being dealt with. It is an incredibly rich collection of stories full of so much <laughs> despite being less than 300 pages there is a lot to sink your teeth into and the prose are stunning Jen is an exquisite writer and the prose are just lush and you just kind of fall into them and let them wrap you up and take your imagination away but those are all the books I'm going to mention in this video like I said I do have a older video recommending LGBTQ plus books so you can check that out if you're interested but I'd also love to hear from you your recommendations of books that deal with LGBTQ plus themes and characters whether they're non-fiction or fiction um, I would I would love 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 to hear about them so please do leave them in the comments down below because I have obviously not covered the entire spectrum here with these recommendations but these are books I have already read and loved and wanted to recommend to you so I hope you have found some recommendations but until next time guys happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!